Dear friends and followers, welcome back to my channel here at the Cargolux maintenance hangar and to a video about the infamous Boeing 747 flap system. If you are a pilot, a passenger or an engineer, you'll appreciate this video series. This will be part one out of three as we'll be looking at the flap controls within the cockpit and their indications on the ICAS how the flaps are moved, which systems are needed, what's inside the flap track fairing, and what is so special about the flaps after landing. In part two, we'll cover the protections and failures. And in part three, we'll be all about the flap load relief. It's time to move some heavy metal and let's get started. Let's go. KLM 643, heavy taxi to the ramp. Taxi to the ramp, KLM 643, take it. Now the flap lever is on the control stand, positioned on the right hand side of the thrust levers. Very unique to Boeing is that the lever looks like a little wing. So in the event of heavy, dense smoke within the cockpit, you would find the lever just by touching it. Now the flap lever can be placed into seven detents, starting with the up position, all leading and trailing edge flaps are retracted. So what are those? You've probably heard of slats before, such as on Airbus and other Boeing models, but the 747 is a bit of an exception, calling the extending metal at the front of the wing the leading edge flaps and the trailing edge flaps at the rear part of the wing. The first detent is one degree in which the leading edge flaps partially extend. Then five degrees, now the trailing edge flaps extend and the remaining leading edge flaps extend too. Flaps 10 and 20 degrees are desired settings for takeoff and 25 and 30 degrees are used for landing. Now I'll come to speak about these little gates here in a minute. But now you may question, Joe, you spoke about one to 30 degrees of flap settings. In relation to what? Now the seven stops move the flaps in degrees relative to the wing's cord line. What's that? The cord of a wing is determined by measuring the distance between the leading and trailing edge in the direction of the airflow. So if you draw a line in between those two points, you have the cord line. But more about that in a minute. So whenever you move the flap lever, this indication will be shown on the upper ICAS in normal configuration. As the flaps are in transit, the selected position will be shown in magenta and then switches to green once they are extended or retracted. Okay, now onto the actual flaps themselves. The Boeing 747 has five different groups. So three leading edge groups on each wing. Now you have the inboard from the wing route to the inner engine two or three, the mid span, which is in between the two engines, and then the outboard section is beyond the outer engine towards the winglet. Now these are famously known as the Kruger flaps, invented by German engineer Werner Kruger. Now to be precise though, the inboards are Kruger flaps and the mid and outspan are variable camber flaps. It's literally just a flap that is hiding below the forward part of the wing and then extends forwards to increase the wing's surface and then folds away once the flap lever is placed to up. Now important note is that all leading edge flaps on the Boeing 747 are extended and retracted pneumatically under normal conditions. Then on the rear part of the wing, we have the large trailing edge flaps paired into two groups, the inboard and the outboard flaps. Believe me when I say they are humongous. 5,600 square feet is the wing area and then it gets nearly doubled after the flaps are fully extended. <laughs> These types of flaps are called triple slotted Fowler flaps. Now in the first stages of the Fowler flaps extension, there's a large increase in lift, but little increase in drag, making them ideal for takeoff. Now, as they continue to extend, the flaps move more downwards, creating a little more lift, but a lot more drag, which yet again is ideal for slowing her down to the landing speed. But let's look at them in more detail. Now, the fully extended flap is actually made up out of three smaller flaps. The fore flap, which can only be seen when extended and is otherwise hidden within the wing during cruise flight. Then the biggest of all three is the mid flap, which can be seen here during cruise 
And lastly, the aft flap, which partially sits below and within the mid flap during cruise. The mid and aft flap are key parts of the wing's camber when retracted. And so to answer the question of degrees, when the flaps 30 is selected, the mid flap is deflected 30 degrees relative to the wing's cord line. The aft flap is deflected more than 60 degrees at full extension, but the mid flap is the one to which the degrees on the flap control stand are related to. Does that make sense? And as these flaps have to overcome incredible aerodynamic forces, they are normally extended and retracted hydraulically. Hydraulic system one for the inboard and system four moves the outboard group. Now important to note is that the opposite trailing edge flaps are mechanically connected by rods to maintain symmetry among each group. Now you might have realized that I have said in normal operation a couple of times in the last few minutes. Now to better understand potential flap failures, you first need to understand how the system works during normal operation. As you move the flap lever, its position or detent is transmitted to three identical flap control units or FCUs. Now the FCUs then sequence and monitor any flap movement, therefore providing the flap indications on the ICAST display as shown earlier and protecting the flaps from asymmetry. For instance, if the outboard flaps don't move simultaneously as the inboard flaps, a caution message will pop up. They also take care of flap load relief, but that's covered in part three of the series. So just remember, in total, there are three FCUs installed, primarily for backup and redundancy. Now we have to understand the two flap control modes in which the FCUs are working called the primary mode and the secondary mode. So whenever I say a normal operation, the flaps are moved and controlled by the FCUs in primary mode. So let's say we are in a descent and want to extend our flaps to flaps one. Your pilot monitoring then places the flap lever into the first detent. Now by doing so, a signal is sent to the FCUs they will check that you are flying below the placard speed for flaps one. Then the signal gets sent to the drive units, which open a valve for the bleed air. Remember, leading edge flaps are moved pneumatically. Now the bleed air pressure then drives a pneumatic motor, which moves the leading edge flaps via rods and linkages into position. Please note, only the inboard and the mid-span leading edge flaps extend at flaps one. No trailing edge flaps are extended yet. So on ground, this sounds like this. That hissing sound you hear is the bleed air blowing into the pneumatic motor. Wunderbar. Then you command flaps five. Your pilot monitoring then places the lever into the flaps five to ten. Yet again, a signal is sent to the FCUs, checking for your current speed, and then forwards the signal to the hydraulic systems one and four. Now a valve opens and the high pressure of the hydraulic system is then directed into two hydraulic motors, one for the inboard and one for the outboard. Now the motor drives connected rods driving these spindles sitting in the flap track fairings in which the flap carriage is moved along the track extending and retracting the flaps. Now during that movement the remaining outboard leading edge flaps are extended pneumatically when moving the flap lever from one to five. Now the leading edge flaps are fully extended and the remaining trailing edge flaps are extended all the way until your final flap setting, either flaps 25 or 30. Now let's imagine you're coming in for landing and you've chosen flaps 25 as your final flap setting and you're just coming over the runway lights. Suddenly, an Air Ryan aircraft is entering the active runway and you have to perform an immediate go around. Now you, as the pilot flying, command go around flaps 20. And your pilot monitoring inadvertently sets flaps 10. Now imagine the incredible loss in drag and especially lift 
as the flaps retract plus an excessive pitch up momentum due to the go around thrust. A very dangerous situation. Therefore, Boeing placed this little gate or a mechanical stop at the flaps 20 to 10 to avoid inadvertently retracting the flaps too much during a go around situation. The other gate at flaps one has a similar purpose. Now imagine just after takeoff, you as the pilot flying command gear up and your pilot monitoring inadvertently selects the flap lever to up instead of the gear lever. Now that would have a dramatic loss in lift and a sudden increase in stall speed at very low altitudes and low speeds. Therefore, Boeing placed the gate at flaps one that at least some extra lift is still guaranteed in case of such an inadvertent retraction. And finally, I'm not sure if you ever realized it, but as a plane spotter, most likely, look at what happens to the inboard and mid-span leading edge flaps after landing. Yes, they retract. They automatically retract once the thrust reverses are opened as they are pretty sensitive and then fold away to protect themselves from flying debris and vibrations caused by the thrust reverses. Yet again, a very unique feature on the Boeing 747, one of so many. <laughs> That's it for today. Make sure to check out part two, where I will explain some protections and failures such as flaps primary, flaps drive, and what the secondary mode has to do with that. Or part three, where I'll explain the flap load relief function. Big thank you to Cargolux for making this video possible. It's an absolute honor to be filming here at their maintenance hangar. And here's your checklist for today. Subscribe to my channel, check activate the notification bell, check, follow my Instagram account, check, and perform a touch and go at my website, check. And don't forget, a good pilot is always learning. Wishing you all the best, your Captain Joe. <laughs>